To implement the authentication and the authorization in our application, it is necessary to understand what is a JSON Web Token. The JSON Web Token is a string with a well-defined format. It allows the server to identify the user and his role. It is used to authenticate and to authorize the users in modern web applications, and it is widely used in web APIs. So after the successful user authentication using a username and password, the server will create the token and will send it back to the client. This token should be stored securely on the browser, and it should be included in the different requests of the client to the server. So when the server receives a request, it will check the JSON Web Token and can either authorize or deny the user access to the private resource. It is possible to authorize the user if he is authenticated or also it is possible to implement the role-based authorization. The JSON Web Token is a string and it has three parts separated with dot. We have the header which identifies which algorithm is used to generate the signature. The signature is the third part of the JSON Web Token. Then we have the payload which is the second part. It contains a set of claims. So a claim is a pair of data, it has a name and a value, and we can add any number of claims to the JSON Web Token. So the signature is very important, because it allows the server to verify the token. And the server should use a secret key to create the signature of the token and also to verify it. So here we have an example of a JSON Web Token. We can see that it is a string with three parts separated with dot. This is the header, this is the payload, and this is the signature. So this is the JSON Web Token, and when we decode it, we obtain this data. So this is the header, it contains the algorithm that is used to create the signature and to verify it. And here we have the signature, which is the third part of the token. In the second part, we have a set of claims. So in our case, we have three claims. This is the first claim. It is called sub and its value is 5. So sub means subject, which means the user identifier. So we can either use sub, which is a standard claim name, or we can use id, which is a custom claim name. Then we have the role, which is admin, and here we have exp. So exp means expiration date. So it is very important to include the expiration date in the token, otherwise it will be valid forever, and this is not secure. In this table we have a list of standard claim names. So the first column contains the claim name, and the second column contains the full claim name. So here we can use either standard claim names inside the JSON Web Token, or also it is possible to define custom claim names. For example, to add the identifier of the user to the JSON Web Token, we can either create a claim called sub, which is a standard claim name, or also we can create a claim called id. Also in this table, we can see that we don't have a standard claim name called role. So if we add a claim called role, this is a custom claim name. And it is very important to add a claim called role if we want to add the role-based authorization. 